Sinatra, Brando, JFK. Marilyn Monroe spent her life looking for love and thought she had finally found it with baseball legend Joe DiMaggio, but their marriage wasn't the fairy tale she was hoping for. Born Norma Jean Mortensen on June 1, 1926, Marilyn Monroe's childhood was anything but rosy. She never knew her father, and her mother was diagnosed with schizophrenia. This left a young Monroe at the mercy of foster homes, and at one point, an orphanage. Living without her mother left Monroe feeling neglected, a pain she carried into adulthood. Another constant in Monroe's childhood was poverty. One of her foster families was so poor, they all bathed in the same bathwater, and Monroe was always last, a fact she recounted in her book, My Story. Like Monroe, Joe DiMaggio was also raised in a low-income family. Growing up in San Francisco as one of nine children born to Italian immigrants, his father was a fisherman who hoped his sons would take over the family business. Marilyn Monroe first met Joe DiMaggio in 1952, after he asked to be introduced to her. Monroe has said she expected to be met with an arrogant man, given that he was freshly retired from a successful baseball career. Writing in her memoir, I expected a flashy New York sports type, and instead, I met this reserved guy who didn't make a pass at me right away. He treated me like something special. Okay, miss, I reckon you can go on with your song now. Monroe and DiMaggio immediately hit things off and soon started a long-distance relationship, with Monroe living on the West Coast and DiMaggio on the East. This, however, did not get in the way of their love. Yes, Monroe and DiMaggio had their differences, yet they shared a lot in common, too. Monroe said in her memoir, The truth is that we are very much alike. My publicity, like Joe's greatness, is something on the outside. It has nothing to do with what we actually are. But the pair's indifference to fame was not the only thing that brought them together. As the baseball star described in the book, Dinner with DiMaggio, Memories of an American Hero. When we got together in the bedroom, it was like the gods were fighting. There were thunderclouds and lightning above us. Given the intense chemistry they shared, it did not take long for Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio to take things to the next level. As Monroe described it in her memoir, we knew it wouldn't be an easy marriage. On the other hand, we couldn't keep on going forever as a pair of cross-country lovers. On January 14, 1954, Monroe and DiMaggio married in a simple ceremony at City Hall in San Francisco. Following their wedding, the couple flew to Japan for their honeymoon, and there, it appears, their troubles started. While still honeymooning in Japan, Monroe was invited to perform for U.S. troops in Korea. Agreeing to the invitation, Monroe traveled to Korea, leaving her husband behind in Japan. In the book, DiMaggio, The Hero's Life, it is speculated that DiMaggio might have hit Monroe during this time, sadly, on their honeymoon in Japan. Joe DiMaggio and Marilyn Monroe were Hollywood's it couple, but behind closed doors, their marriage was rocky. Insecure about his wife's success and the attention that came with it, the baseball star was uncomfortable with Monroe's perception as a sex symbol. Monroe reportedly confirmed this to a friend of hers, actor Brad Dexter. She told him that not only was DiMaggio uninterested in her work as an actress, but that he wanted to cut her off from the world of motion pictures altogether. For DiMaggio, Monroe's fame seemed to bruise his ego, and he was constantly trying to get her to quit acting, something his friend Norman Brokaw, a Hollywood agent, warned him about. In an article in the Daily Mail, Brokaw is quoted telling DiMaggio, "...there's no actress in this business who is going to give up Clark Gable or Tyrone Power or Spencer Tracy for any man, so you have to get used to it, or honest to God, you're going to lose her." And lose her, he did. The final straw in Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio's tumultuous relationship came in 1954, while she was filming The Seven Year Itch. DiMaggio, alongside thousands of other onlookers, was present on set when she shot the now famous flying skirt scene. Ooh, do you feel the breeze from the subway? Isn't it delicious? Director Billy Wilder described DiMaggio as having the look of death as he watched his wife relish her skirt flying above her knees, sometimes going as high as her face. Upon getting home, the couple got into a fight that seemingly ended with the baseball player hitting Monroe. In October 1954, Monroe announced her divorce from DiMaggio, citing mental cruelty, 
Standing before a judge, Monroe admitted that she had hoped her marriage to DiMaggio would be filled with love, warmth, and affection. Instead, she described the baseball player as cold and indifferent. My husband would get into moods when he wouldn't speak to me for periods of sometimes 10 days, she said. What makes you so sad? I think you're the saddest girl I ever met. You're the first man I ever said that. But while this is one known reason for the divorce, the book, Dinner with DiMaggio, Memories of an American Hero, presents a different, tragic theory. Co-authors Rock and John Positano write, From Joe's point of view, they didn't stay married because Marilyn was not able to have children. Despite their tumultuous marriage and divorce, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio remained on good terms. For example, when Monroe underwent surgery only a few weeks after their divorce, DiMaggio was not only by her side at the hospital, but he remained with her as she recuperated at home. DiMaggio was also Monroe's date to the premiere of The Seven Year Itch, and in 1961, when she was forcefully admitted to a psychiatric home, DiMaggio secured her release. Though Monroe never gave up searching for love, DiMaggio always held a special place in her heart. I'm gonna fall in love with you. Because I always, always do. After her death, a letter addressed to DiMaggio was found in Monroe's room, reading, If I can only succeed in making you happy, I will have succeeded in the biggest and most difficult thing there is. That is to make one person completely happy. You might be surprised to learn that Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio were thinking of giving their marriage a second chance. And even though Monroe was linked to several men following her divorce from DiMaggio, he never gave up hope of winning her back. In the end, he succeeded, with the pair rekindling their love shortly before Monroe's death. In the PBS documentary, Joe DiMaggio, The Hero's Life, DiMaggio's former teammate, Jerry Coleman, revealed he had seen them together in New York, recounting, And I saw this couple coming down, and Joe's got his head up in the air and his arm around Marilyn, and they're just daydreaming along and never even saw me. I didn't bother to stop and say hello. I thought he was happy as he was. Leave him alone. In DiMaggio, setting the record straight, a 2003 biography, DiMaggio's lawyer, Morris Engelberg, confirmed that the baseball star had been planning another wedding with Monroe when she died. According to the book, their marriage was set for August 8, 1962, the same day Monroe was laid to rest. As Engelberg wrote, that was the date Marilyn Monroe was buried. Joe leaned over her casket, sobbed that he loved her, and kissed her cold forehead. On August 5, 1962, Marilyn Monroe was found dead in her Los Angeles home. She was 36. The official report is that Monroe died after accidentally overdosing on prescription sleeping pills. And yet, there have also been many conspiracy theories surrounding Monroe's death, including links to President John F. Kennedy and his brother Robert Kennedy, whom she was allegedly having affairs with. Some believe the Kennedys were involved in her death due to the rumored affairs. Others think that the actors had too much incriminating information on them. Whether or not there is any truth to these theories remains a mystery. But for those closest to Monroe, including DiMaggio, Monroe's cause of death is not up for debate. As he wrote in his biography, I always knew who killed her, but I didn't want to start a revolution in this country. She told me someone would do her in, but I kept quiet. Her confidant until the very end, Joe DiMaggio spent his life bolstering Marilyn Monroe's legacy. With Monroe having no closer friends to turn to at the time, DiMaggio was the first person informed of her death. Proving his friendship, the baseball star planned and executed Monroe's funeral, making sure to keep several Hollywood stars from attending. DiMaggio is even quoted in a PBS documentary as saying, Tell them. If it wasn't for them, she'd still be here. DiMaggio had roses delivered to Monroe's crypt three times a week for 20 years. The flower shop that delivered them was quoted as saying they sent 19,000 roses to Marilyn's grave on DiMaggio's behalf. And although DiMaggio was no longer sending flowers by the time he died in 1999, his love for Monroe never wavered. As writer Maury Engelberg stated in his 2003 biography of the baseball star, Joe DiMaggio was in love with Marilyn Monroe until the moment he died. Adding this heartbreaking detail at the end, he took his last breath, fully expecting to meet her in that other world, which he was certain existed. I'll finally get to see Marilyn, were his last words.